Hey everybody, welcome to Saltio Gamer, where we're on an airsoft journey and we're sharing everything we learn along the way. Today we're talking about selecting your pistol and specifically gas blowback versus non-gas blowback. What does that even mean? What are the differences and what's it mean to you? By the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of what fits best into your playstyle. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're talking about how to select a pistol and specifically gas blowback versus non-gas blowback and what's the difference? But first let's answer the question, do you even need a pistol? Ultimately, the answer is probably no, you don't. But there's certain situations that's certainly gonna come in handy. I mean, if you're in the Milsom and you just really like that immersive experience, then you may feel naked without one. In which case, by all means, you should have a sidearm. And it's nice just to have a backup out on the field. I mean, you never know what's gonna happen with your primary gun. You could, you could simply run out of ammo, you could have a jam at a critical moment, your battery could die, or your gun could actually just break on the field and stop working on you. And if you don't have a sidearm or a secondary on you, then you might be walking back to the parking lot to get another secondary gun, or if you don't have a secondary gun, you might be done for the day. And there's also specific airsoft rules where you're probably gonna wanna have a sidearm. I mean, if you're running a DMR, you're gonna have a minimum engagement distance of at least 50 feet. And if you're running a sniper rifle, you're gonna have a minimum engagement distance of at least 100 feet on almost every field you play. So if you find yourself closer than 100 feet to an enemy, or if somebody is rushing up on you, you may wish you had a sidearm to pull out and fight back. And last, but certainly not least, pistols are fun. So what does it really matter, gas blowback versus non-gas blowback, and does it really matter to you? Let's head over to the table and look at some guns and let's figure that out. All right, so here we've got a few examples of gas blowback versus non-gas blowback. These two guns are gas blowback, this is non-gas blowback, and this is spring. Of course, spring obviously is spring powered. You can cock it back, it compresses the spring, and that's how it fires. Non-gas blowback has a stationary slide, so it doesn't move at all. So when we fire the non-gas blowback, nothing moves. It just fires like that. Of course, gas blowback guns have a moving slide on them to simulate the realism of the slide blowing back when you fire a bullet. And on these, the slide blows back when you fire it. Similarly here on this Elite Force 1911 TAC, the slide is gonna blow back when you fire, simulating a bullet being fired like that. So we don't really need to talk about the Springer, so we'll put that one aside. And let's just consolidate down to these two guys so we can talk about gas blowback versus non-gas blowback. And gas blowback can come in a couple of different varieties. Um, for our purposes, these are all CO2 powered, so the CO2 is actually in the handle. You can actually get green gas magazines where the magazine itself you fill with green gas and that's the gas power for the pistol. But for these, it's just CO2. For the purposes of blowback versus non-blowback, CO2 or green gas, it works exactly the same. And the way the gas blowback works is that when you fire the gun, part of the gas that's expelled is used to blow that slide back. And it's a pretty heavy slide. It takes a good bit of resistance to push it back. So it's using a, a good bit of that gas to push that slide back. Whereas on the non-blowback, there's no moving parts. All of the gas that's expelled when you fire the weapon is used to push the BB out of the barrel. And a comparison between the two is kind of counterintuitive because non-gas blowback guns are actually cheaper. They're less popular, but they actually perform better. The air is consistently being put behind the BB, 100% from the source. With non-gas blowback, there's, there's no slide to push back, so it's far more efficient. There's no motion or movement, so it makes it far easier to make an accurate shot, and it makes it far easier to make accurate follow-up shots as well. And with fewer moving parts, there's less to go wrong on this gun. It's easier to clean and maintain, and it lasts longer. But on the other hand, gas blowbacks do break down. So if you want to take apart and clean every inch of this gun, you can do that. And since you can take it apart into all these pieces, you can upgrade every single piece in this gas blowback gun. Fully upgradable. And we mentioned that gas blowbacks use part of that gas to push that slide back. So they go through a lot more gas than a non-gas blowback gun does. Typically, you can go through about twice as many mags on the same gas source with a non-gas blowback gun than you can with a gas blowback gun. Non-gas blowback guns are typically less expensive because they're much simpler made, there's no moving parts, but in most cases, you aren't gonna have a hop-up on a non-gas blowback gun. 
And if you're a stealthy player, then the non-gas wheelbuck is probably really the tool of your trade. It's, it's going to be a lot easier to be quiet with this gun than with a gas wheelback gun where the slide, that slide is racking back very loudly as you shoot. So here's the real question. If the non-gas pullback guns are less expensive, more efficient, shoot for longer periods of time, are easier to clean and maintain and last longer, and are easier to shoot accurately and shoot follow-up shots more accurately, then why the heck would you ever use a gas blowback gun? Well, as we mentioned, you can't upgrade a simply made non-gas blowback gun because generally you can't take them apart. Whereas a gas blowback gun, you can upgrade most of the parts. And then there's just the cool feel of realism. It's a very satisfying feeling when that slide kicks back. And generally speaking, and there's really no particular reason for this, it just happens to be the way that it is, gas wheel bike guns are typically uh, made all metal, a little bit more durable. And key is that they typically come with a hop up so you can get additional accuracy and additional distance. So that really covers it. You know, you've got to decide whether you want price and a little bit of an edge on performance versus realism and just that cool, as close to real steel feel as you can get in Airsoft. You know, this video is mainly about picking a pistol, but you know, the same principles apply to gas blowback and rifles as well. So, I mean, you know, what about gas blowback and rifles versus AGs? Well, in gas blowback rifles, there's no gearbox, so it's lighter and quieter, and it has the same realistic immersion for Milsom that you get in the pistol. Instead of a slide blowing back, it's a bolt blowing back, and it does provide that additional feel of realism. And you can get electronic blowback, but then you're, you're back to having a heavy gearbox. Even the mags for GBB rifles are quieter because they're usually low capacity because the gas goes into the magazine itself. There's not as much room for BBs. Now on the flip side of that, they are more expensive than typical AEG magazines as well. Same is true for the rifles. For whatever reason, gas blowback rifles are a little bit more expensive than their AEG counterparts. The real negative to GBB rifles is as the gas depletes, your FPS drops. And sometimes it can be really quite dramatic. You could be dropping 10 feet per second per shot. And by the time you get down to like a third of your gas or less, you could be shooting with some really, really awful performance. So ultimately, it really just comes down to personal preference. Non-gas blowback pistols have got a lot of pros. If you're just concerned with pure performance and efficiency for pew pew, then non-gas blowback may be the way to go for you. Whereas gas blowbacks are, are better for realism and the whole immersion experience of Milsom. And they're also upgradable. And last but certainly not least, and they're just fun. But ultimately, it's up to you what works best for your play style. And we just hope that this information helps you decide what pistol works best for you. And if you're looking for a pistol, and if you're leaning towards one, definitely tell us about it in the comments below. Did this video push you in any one direction or the other, or did it not affect your decision at all? And in fact, if you've already got a pistol, we want to hear from you in the comments as well. You know, what are you using today? Is it gas blowback? Is it non-gas blowback? Do you own both? What are your thoughts on what we present here today? Maybe there's something we missed or maybe there's something we got wrong. Definitely tell us about it in the comments below because we're certainly no experts by any stretch of the imagination. We're just sharing what we've learned on our Airsoft experience. Speaking of which, if you haven't joined us already on our Airsoft experience, why the heck not? It's free. Come on, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video that comes out every Tuesday and bonus videos on Friday because we're going to have more coming your way soon. And until then, We'll see you next time.